Okay, so here we're going to talk about uh, two sample uh, t tests. So this is uh, independent, where the two samples aren't uh, related somehow, and our sigma is unknown. Okay, so first off, we know we're doing a test, and we're comparing two different things now, college A and college B. And notice they're giving us uh, two different averages there, right? Averages is thrown around, so uh, we know we're going to be doing a mean. And they're giving us two different averages, one for college A and one for college B. So we know we're going to be doing a hypothesis test, a two-sample, and we're dealing with means for now. So let's go ahead and do our first step of our null and our alternative hypothesis here. So the null and the alt. Okay, we are comparing uh, two groups to uh, each other here. So college A and college B. So we're going to have mu A and mu B. Uh, you could call it mu 1 or mu 2, whatever you like. I like using subscripts of letters to compare those here. And we're saying that College A has taken more classes. So that's going to be our claim right there, that College A is going to be greater than uh, that average of B. I'll put my little note there. And by default, the null is going to get equals. So our second step, let's go ahead and get all of our data here. Again, our sigma is unknown, so we know we're going to be using a t-test. So we're going to be looking at s rather than uh, sigma. And notice I put a subscript of A on everything there. Uh, that's because uh, that's corresponding to college A. So I'm going to want to have the same stats. But now I'm putting a subscript of B to correspond that it's talking about college B. And so let's write those in here. So uh, the average was 4, standard deviation 1, 5, and then sample of 11 for the first college. The second college here was three and a half was the average, a standard deviation of one, and then a sample of nine. And just to make sure we don't forget it, our alpha there. Okay. And so let's go on to do our little sketch here. And again, what we're interested in is the critical values, the alpha, the test statistic, and the p-value. That's kind of what we like to sketch here. And I'm going to go ahead and shade in my alpha which is 0.01, and that corresponds to the uh, T critical value. Let me denote what I'm using here. This is going to be a two-sample T test that we're going to end up using. And I'm going to go ahead and just run that in my calculator. You can watch the video on how to run that. And when you plug that sample in, it's going to give you, or that test in, it's going to give you 0.89 for your test statistic and approximately 0.1928 for the P value. And our degrees of freedom, it's also going to give that to you, which is about 17.40. If you recall, to get the T critical value, you do an inverse T area to the left and then your degrees of freedom. And that's going to give us about 2.56. And you need the TI-84 in order to do that. And there's my alpha just to label. So what we have is here's my test statistic. 0.89, which is going to be smaller than the critical value. So that's how I know it's to the uh, left of it. And so all of this area here, that corresponds to my p-value of 1928 there. Okay, so um, here we're saying mu a is larger than mu b. Let's do some little algebra here. Let's recall here, if I were to subtract that over to the other side, I would have mu a minus mu b, which is greater than zero. And so sometimes they will display the claim in this fashion rather than like this. Um, this has its merit when we start talking about dependent uh, samples. Uh, but for now, I think it's a lot easier to just write it uh, with this notation. But we should feel pretty comfortable going back and forth uh, between those two. So here on the graph, this is we're talking about the difference. So we're looking at the difference between these two averages. So XA minus uh, XB there. And so right in the middle is going to be zero because we're comparing them to each other there. 
So 4 minus 3.5 gives us 0.5 here. So I'm taking this difference and this difference, and that's going to correspond to 0.5, which goes with the actual test statistic. That's what we're figuring out. We're converting the difference of those into a T-score, and that's what that, uh, uh, that test statistic is. So the t-test statistic is getting the difference for those guys. And let me label that step three. Okay, so let's go to step four here. P-value is larger than alpha, so we do not reject the null. Therefore, we're going to reject the alternative. And since the claim is our alternative, we're going to go ahead and reject that. So we would say that there is not sufficient uh, evidence to support uh, the claim that and there's our claim right there you could copy that word for word or paraphrase it so that students from college a take more classes there we go so again what we were trying to figure out is we know four is larger than 3.5 so that's a given that it's larger than that the question is here's our line in the sand is it over here where it's close enough where we say, yeah, it's bigger, but it's about equal? Or is it over here beyond that line in the sand where we say, yeah, it's bigger and it's significantly different? That's really what we're trying to figure out. Is it beyond that line in the sand or not? And in this case, it's not. So even though it's bigger, it's not statistically significant to really conclude that they're taking more, a lot more classes. Okay. So here's another one, and this is going to have some uh, data to put into a list here. Okay, so let's identify our null and our alternative here. And we're talking means, so as you go through this, uh, there's going to be a key phrase right there of means. And so we're comparing these means of... Um, online classes with the means of face-to-face uh, -face classes here. And so I'm calling that group O and group F, okay? Or you could call it one and two, it doesn't really make a difference here. And we're saying that the online class would be lower in this case, so that's gonna be less than, so that's gonna be our claim. Probably denote that right there. Okay. And so let's go ahead and get all of our data. And again, I'm going to do it for the online class, uh, the mean standard deviation and N, and also for the face-to-face -face class. And since we have just raw data here, we're going to just run a one of our stats on these guys. So I'm going to call the top one list one and the bottom one, the face-to-face the -face list two. And I'm going to run a one of our stats on each of them. And this is what I'm getting here. So the mean, standard deviation, sample size for each of these groups here. Okay. So now we have that data. So let's go ahead and go to our graph, or step three here. And we're going to be doing a two-sample t-test, again, because we're talking means. And our uh, sigma is not given here. And we could talk about this in terms of the difference of those two or in terms of t-scores. And in both cases, zero is going to be in the middle here. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and look for our t-critical value, our alpha, our test statistic, and our p-value. And again, I'm just plugging this into the calculator. I'm running a two-sample t-test in order to get these values here. And our degrees of freedom also come from the calculator when we run that two-sample t-test. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, shade in our alpha, and we're doing less than, so we know it's a left tail test here. Inverse t, so area to the left, and then degrees of freedom will give you that critical value. And notice it's negative because it's to the left of zero there. And then a test statistic is 
larger negative, so it's going to be more to the left here. And I'll put that in blue. And so that small area there is going to correspond to the p-value. Okay. And again, we're looking at the difference of these two. So if we're subtracting those means, we get negative 12, 13. And that's what that uh, line corresponds to. Okay, our fourth step here, p-value is less than alpha. So we're going to say we reject the null. So do not reject the alternative. Therefore, we are not going to reject the alternative. So we're going to say there is sufficient um, evidence uh, to support the claim here. That the online classes uh, had a lower final exam than the face-to-face. -face. Okay. And again, here we're looking at a two-sample t-test because this is for independent samples, where if I take, let's just say, the fourth person in this group and a fourth person in this group, they are not tied into each other somehow. They're completely independent, um, as opposed to if I was looking at the same person, like a before and after case, then those scores would be tied up together. Um, and we'll look at that in the, uh, in, uh, the following sections for uh, dependent. But for now, we're looking at uh, independent groups here.